Welcome to Oxford Community Television News. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Terry Stiles. And coming up in the news this week, there was a domestic assault in Oxford, but wait till you see how this one ended. And what is a sandwich board to go? Stay tuned and learn more about these stories and others. The Oxford News begins right now. Our first story involves domestic assault on a woman living on Manor Street. Uh, she called deputies claiming that her husband was restraining her from taking her three children to a friend's home. When Oakland County deputies arrived at the home, the husband said that his wife hit him in the face, leaving evidence of red marks on his face. The children confirmed the dep to the deputies that the mom had hit dad and the woman was arrested for domestic assault and taken to the Oakland County Jail. It appears an Oxford woman felt she was being followed by an unknown truck driver and Oxford police rose to her assistance after she used her cell phone as backup security. The woman reported to the Oxford dispatch that she was being followed at Broadway and Flint Streets. However, the woman canceled the assistance call, reporting that when she arrived home, the pickup passed her on the driveway prior to her arrival. And she called police, uh, she told 911 that she called police because she was scared. And it's really nice to know that safety is just a phone call away. Many times our fire police and on 911 professionals do not receive recognition for their services that they provide in keeping our residents and property safe. But recently an Oxford resident sent a letter thanking the 911 dispatcher who took an emergency call. It was reported a barn was on fire and a farm livestock remaining inside the building. The fire department and Oakland County deputies were able to save the animals but not the building. The property owner was grateful for the quick response of firemen, officers and neighbors who helped keep his animals safe. The Oxford Village Planning Commission decided not to regulate sandwich board signs with traveling human feet attached, affectionately referred to as sandwich board signs to go. There is an existing village ordinance designation to regulate non-moving and freestanding sandwich board signs. However, businesses displaying such a sign must purchase an inspection permit first. The difference is there's uh, there appears to be no continuity of the sign ordinance, no guideline, and no inspection for permits required for people toting portable signs. Planning commissioners stated that people are complaining privately that they want regulations but will not publicize their complaints as they fear, they may fear, reprisal. Other commissioners felt this type of sign adds quaintness to the downtown area, so I guess we want to know what your opinion is. Unless a future issue arises, the like, it is likely that this will be the only non-regulated sign issue left in Oxford. The majority vote of the Planning Commission tabled the subject with no further action expected. The Village Planning Commission also will be confronted with providing a method to better regulate adult businesses who wish to move into the downtown Oxford area. The whole subject came about by the appearance of a downtown store that not only sells tobacco products but also sells medical marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Currently, the village ordinances define adult uses as any commercial or recreational establishment which at all times excludes minors by virtue of age, including adult bookstores, adult motion picture theaters, adult mini motion picture theaters, adult drive-in theaters, adult massage parlors, adult modeling uh, studios, and eating, drinking places with sexually oriented entertainment. Planning Commission Chairperson uh, Susan Bassardi and Commissioner Jack Curtis said that they feel tobacco stores would be basically no problem, but the sale of drug items would be and should be defined as a store which should be included on the adult uses list of unwanted businesses in downtown Oxford. Village Police Chief Mike Nemanowski said in his 40 years as an officer he never ran across anybody who smoked regular tobacco in a glass pipe. The Planning Commission voted to investigate further and come up with a solution to the problem in the near future. Could Representative Brad Jacobson, who sits on the Transportation Committee, come to the village's rescue on Cemetery Hill? Brad was contacted by local officials 
to see if financial help could be provided from the federal level to help the burdening Burdick Street road mess. After reviewing all of the issues, Jacobson said he feels hopeful that Oxford has at least a 50-50 chance of getting financial help to the village. For the past three years, the village has been trying with no success to obtain grant money from the state to repair the crumbling West Burdick Hill. Now, the road is in such dangerous disrepair that potholes are becoming a serious hazard for local motorists and ex experienced uh, blow, blown out tires. The bent wheel rims also. Let's hope that the federal government hears the thud of our tires as they hit bottom. And could Addison Township see a new Township Hall in the future? Township Supervisor Bruce Pearson hopes so as he prepares to convince the board that it's time to have a discussion of the possibility of building a new Township Hall. The leaky roof at the Township Hall caused the Senior Center to be closed for about two weeks and maintenance costs to the current hall are continuing to increase. How about those potholes on that hill? Oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> there's potholes and there's leaky roofs and everything we've done this winter. We've tolerated this um, cold weather, but it's just tearing us apart. Well, today we've talked about potholes and pot. <laughs> so <laughs> that yeah, pretty well wraps so it, don't it? things need to change a little bit. <laughs> okay. So that's it for the local news this week. If you'd like to know more about what's going on in your our local area, go to the store and pick up a copy of the Oxford Leader. Coming up next on OCTV, more news. First, the Oxford Local Sports, then join uh, Dave Kenny with his automotive talk show and science in the news programs. Right after those reports, I'll be back with your weekly calendar of events. This is Oxford's Community News. I'm Terry Stiles. And I'm Elgin Nichols. Always be kind to your friends and neighbors, and thanks for watching. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome to this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from the publication Automotive News. In our first story, Honda Motor Company will end production of the Insight, the first hybrid vehicle introduced in Europe and the United States after demand plunged and sales slagged behind Toyota Motor Corporation's Prius hybrid model. Honda informed dealers in November that the current generation of the gasoline electric Insight will be discontinued this month and asked them to stop taking orders, according to Yuka Abe, a Tokyo-based spokeswoman for the car maker. And at C Cadillac, after more than a decade of rumors, a big rear-wheel drive Cadillac sedan looks to be a go. This heavily covered car was spotted during testing near the General Motors Proving Grounds in suburban Detroit. The sedan, the first vehicle to be built on GM's new rear-wheel drive platform, codenamed Omega, is expected to go on sale in mid to late 2015 as a 2016 model. The potential challenger to the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, called the LTS for now, features a longer dash to axle and a more upright front end than Cadillac's recent entries. And at Ford, Ford struggling with in-car technology flaws will no longer use Microsoft's Windows for Sync, instead basing the system on BlackBerry's QNX, according to people briefed on the matter. Using QNX will be less expensive than licensing Microsoft technology and will improve the flexibility and speed of the next sync system that people who ask not to be identified because the decision has been made, said on February 22nd. The QNX operating system is the standard right now, says Matthew Stover, an analyst for Guggenheim Partners in Boston. QNX is well-known, understood OS. It's proven. BlackBerry is already a supplier of technology and engineering to Ford, among other car makers, and QNX technology is already in use in Ford vehicles on the road today, said Paul LaRue, a QNX spokesman. And on the recall front, General Motors has added more than 588,000 vehicles to a recall to fix ignition switches that can inadvertently shut off engines and cause crashes, a problem that has now been linked to 31 crashes and 13 front seat deaths. A heavy key ring or jarring from rough payment can 
Move the ignition out of the run position, cutting off the engine. If that happens, the front airbags may not work, GM said. The company said it is adding Saturn ion compacts from model years 2003 to 2007 and Chevrolet HHR SUVs and Pontiac Solstice and Saturn Sky sports cars from model years 2006 to 2007 to the recall. The additional models increased the total number of vehicles recalled to 1.37 million vehicles. GM said on February 13th it would recall 780,000 Chevrolet Cobalts and Pontiac G5s from the 2000 to 2007 model years to inspect and repair the ignition switch. GM said dealers will inspect and replace the ignition switch to prevent the unintentional and inadvertent key movement. Until the, until the inspection and recall is performed, owners and drivers should only use the ignition key with nothing else on the key ring, GM said. The company said it is also working with suppliers to increase parts and accelerate availability. And still on the recall front, Nissan Motor Companies is recalling over 16,800 Frontier pickups in North America to address an electrical issue that could cause a fire, according to documents filed with the U.S. safety regulators. The document said a circuit breaker in mid-sized trucks from model years 2012 to 2014 may have been installed incorrectly at an assembly plant in Canton, Mississippi, potentially causing an electrical short and fire. The power seat and sunroof functions might also be rendered inoperable, according to documents filed with NHTSA. A Nissan spokesman said there have been no reports of accidents or injuries related to the issue, but one report of smoke coming from under a dashboard in a truck in Mexico was reported in December. Uh, dealers will inspect the circuit breaker wire harness and repair free of charge if needed. The recall is expected to begin in early in March, according to NHTSA documents. Well, that's all for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and as always, may the wind be at your back as you cruise down life's highways. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television, and we'll be right back. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. I'm John Ochens and welcome to the Oxford Wildcat School Update for the week of February 24th, 2014. It's a tale as old as time, and the Oxford High School theater troupe will be telling it. Rehearsals have been going on intensely since January, preparing for the award-winning Disney musical, Beauty and the Beast. I spent some time with the cast as they practiced their scenes this week. Christopher Card is the Oxford High School Choral Director. He and theater director Krista Price are in charge. He tells us more about the production and how it's coming together. The show's coming up in four weeks now, so okay. we open March 19th, we run through the 22nd. So we're in that four week period where they they know their scenes and it's time to really perfect those and get those ready. You've got to pull yourself together. Gosh, it disturbs me to see you guest on looking so down in the dumps. Oxford High School is just a place of opportunity. I think that's the best way to put it. There's so much that is done here. Uh, the academics is, academics is exceptional. The extracurriculars are phenomenal. And with our fine arts programs, I mean, the fact that we have dance, strings, band, choir, theater, there's just so many things that are offered for students. And the exciting thing is when kids want to do more than one. So they can do a sport and they can do theater. And so when it comes down to it, sometimes kids have to choose what can we do. But with a campus our size with 1,500 students, it's usually not hard to find people that are capable of filling a part either on stage or off stage um, because it's something they're really interested in doing. Uh, it's always a big decision choosing the show. Uh, so much goes into that decision. Uh, where are we at in the, the, the state of our program? Are we looking for a popular show or are we looking to develop a, pick a show that will develop the kids' capabilities? And so we've been wanting to do Beauty and the Beast and it was time to get something that's popular the community we want to come out for, something with name recognition. And it certainly is a show that requires some real strong acting and singing chops. So really for this year, Beauty and the Beast was a definite, um, definite show for us to do. 
We're doing five performances. We have a Wednesday, a Thursday, Friday, and two shows on Saturday. Well, we started in January. It's quite a lengthy process. So we've run in even Saturdays to get ready for this. The students know that it's a big production. There's high expectations because people know the songs already and all the dialogue for it because it's such a popular song show. So we've got a lot of work to do. So we start early. It's usually about a 10 week production to put it together. Tickets are free for Oxford students accompanied by paying parents. Performances are March 19th through the 22nd at the Oxford Performing Arts Center. If you're walking through the Board of Education building, you might notice signs about IOCs. This stands for Individual Oral Commentaries, and it's something our international baccalaureate students must go through before graduating. They must deliver orally a commentary on a part of one of the books studied in their language and or literature course. We have 21 seniors in the program, leading to a diploma that will have worldwide recognition. That's the Oxford Wildcats Schools update for this week. I'm John Ochens for Oxford Community Television. I'll see you next week. You are watching the Michigan American Legion Station of the Year for the fourth year in a row, Oxford Community Television. Hi and welcome to Oxford Sports. I'm Jamie Hughes. Hope you're doing well wherever you're tucked in. I want to thank Andy Curtis last week for sitting in for me for actually the past two weeks. Good stuff in there with him. Uh, after an extremely tough win over Farmington and Stony Creek this past week, Oxford Varsity Boys Basketball is within the league title. If they can beat Harrison High School on Thursday at home, Coach Henning believes that he definitely has the caliber of players, but he also has the caliber of assistant coaches who have actually raised the bar in Oxford basketball. The Oxford girls varsity basketball team is ready for the semifinal play. Back-to-back -back wins this past week against Lake Orion and Farmington. Kickoff uh, the week began with the beating of Lake Orion 56-32 on February 18th. The Wildcats' high-pressure defense and fast-paced offense outscored the Dragons in four quarters and held them to single-digit point totals of three. Oxford was led by Jessica Murphy, 28 points, 7 rebounds, 4 steals. In her final game, Samantha Medici scored 13 points and 3 assists, 4 steals. Sky Donaldson chipped away at 10 points, while Sherilyn Bannis triggered the offensive outburst, contributing to 6 assists, 4 takeaways. The Lady Wildcats finished their regular season with a win 55-34 over Farmington on February 20th. They actually ended up their regular season on a record of 14-6, 8-6 in the OAA White Division. One can only be pleased with the Oxford wrestlers. Again, as I say, not faring as well. The Oxford grapplers took a hard blow this past weekend as the state tournament after being defeated by Davidson Cardinals 47-16 to in semifinal. Winners advanced to the state finals that took place at the Palace this past weekend. We'll have the results in next week's broadcast. Jumping on the slopes, the Holly Oxford boys tandem team finished third 137 at the Southeastern Michigan Ski League Championship race held at Alpine Valley on February 18th. In the ladies' division, Emma Ford skied as an individual qualifier. She placed 22nd. Scores in the uh, ski championship or ski uh, contest, Bloomfield Hills had 157, followed by Birmingham Brother Rice at 127. Again, Oxford fared pretty good. Uh, the Oxford boys came out of the guy gate firing in bowling. It's not since 2010 have they went to the finals. Congratulations to both the boys and girls bowling in their season and also Coach Lafner. That's Oxford Sports for this week. I'm Jim, uh, Jamie Hughes. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. In the words of Ron Burgundy, stay safe, Oxford. Hello, BJ Stapp here with Maggie, the fire safety dog from the Oxford Fire Department. Just reminding the residents of Oxford to check to make sure you have working smoke detectors. And if you are in need of smoke detectors, please visit our website or stop in at Fire Station 1 during normal business hours to fill out an application to have a free, smoke de or free smoke detectors installed in your home. Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny, and these stories are taken from the publication New Scientist. In our first story, young adults beware, the swine flu responsible for the pandemic five years ago is once again the dominant strain in North America. This doesn't mean we are in the midst of another swine flu pandemic, but it does mean that people of working age are once again hardest hit by the virus which has been hanging around since 2009. So far, more than 60% of people in the U.S. who have caught severe flu this season or died of it are between 18 and 64 years old. This is similar to rates during the pandemic, 
but double the number of severe cases in this age group in the past three winters when the H3N2 virus, which is more likely to hit older people, was top dog in North America. Only about a third of severe cases in the U.S. this year are in people over 65. Tom Frieden, head of U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia, last week chalked this up to working age adults being half as likely to get a flu shot as older ones. But this can't be right. Vaccination rates were similar last winter when severe flu hit more than twice as many older adults as younger ones. And the vaccine is only about 60% effective, even less so in over 65s, making it even less likely to account for the shift. So what's going on? What we are seeing is a global battle for supremacy among flu viruses, says Lone Simonson of George Washington University. Usually, a pandemic flu wipes out the competition and continues to circulate as the sole seasonal flu virus afterwards. Well, the pandemic, or H1N1 virus, has persisted this time. So has the H3N2, one of the seasonal viruses from before 2009. This means the two viruses are now fighting for supremacy. In the U.S. this year, 98% of cases are due to the H1N1 virus, the rest H3N2. Last year, 94% were H3N2. In Europe, the pandemic virus and H3N2 are split 60-40 this year, but the pandemic virus has dominated every winter since 2009, every, every other winter that is, since 2009, apart from the 2011 to 2012 season when the H3N2 won out. It means that no one is safe. Older people can largely fend off the H1N1 flu virus because they have immunity from exposure before 1957 when a similar virus circulated. But for them, the H3N2 virus can be deadly. Conversely, younger adults have more resistance to H3N2 but are succumbing to H1N1. Uh, on a lighter note, ski boots are notorious for pinching your feet. But instead of shelling out for a new pair of, or being measured for expensive, specially molded insoles, why not print your own? British startup Alprint is set to launch an app that lets you create custom 3D printed insoles by taking cell phone photos of your feet. Skiers take a few pictures of their feet while standing on a simple calibration mat that can be printed on A4 paper at home. The dimensions of the foot are calculated from these pictures and along with other data such as the person's weight used to determine the density of various parts of the insole. A machine learning algorithm that has been trained on a database of foot profiles then matches their feet with the way similarly shaped feet distribute pressure when standing in a standard skiing position. Alprint's 3D printer then knows the proportion of the thermoplastic material required for the insole. The finished insole is then sent to you. The 3D printed custom insoles can be slotted into any existing ski boot to provide the appropriate support and comfort and no pinch feet. And in our last story, before J.R.R. Tolkien was dreaming up hobbits and constructing languages for elves to speak, he worked for the Oxford English Dictionary where he was assigned words beginning with W. Walrus, Tolkien proposed, came from the Old Norse hrosver, meaning horse whale. Walruses live for some 30 years in the wild and are huge. Males can reach 3.6 meters long and weigh 2,000 kilograms. They cluster in thousands on beaches and have remarkable meter-long tusks. But both sexes have monster teeth used by males for fighting. Walruses have few natural predators. Only an orca, or killer whale, or a polar bear would even try to take one on. But if you ever do get close, you might smell their breath. Notoriously bad, apparently, from a diet composed mainly of clams. Well, that's it for this edition of Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television, and we'll be right back after this. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. someone is having a stroke know the sudden signs learn fast face drooping arm weakness speech difficulty time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately learn the body language and spot a stroke fast 
Welcome to another segment of the news we call your weekly calendar of events where we feature your weekly calendar of local Oxford and Addison uh, community events including charity, special fundraisers, and general community information. Now if you or your organization would like help to get your message out to the public, contact us for detailed information at our studio phone number 248-628-9658 or you can go to our website at occtv.org. The Leonard Summer Strawberry Festival Committee is seeking volunteers to help coordinate the annual Strawberry Festival to be held July of this year. They're looking for people who want to get involved with booth rentals, entertainment, and almost every facet of interest. Requirements for all jobs? Be prepared to meet nice, down-to-earth people and have fun. The Leonard Summer Strawberry Festival Committee meets at 6.30 p.m. on the first Monday of every month at Roland Hall, 23 East Elmwood Street in Leonard. For more information, call Char Sotheby at 248-628-5924 or you can contact Phyllis Rowe at 248-628-5471. Saturday, March 8th, boys from kindergarten through sixth grade can dress up and take their moms to the Oxford Parks and Recreation's annual Mother-Son Dance. It will be held at the Devil's Ridge Golf Club and starting at 6.30 with photos then dancing from 7 until 8.30 p.m. Tickets must be purchased in advance. Non-residents, $10. Oxford residents, $8. For more information, call 248-628-1720. Or you can go to their website at oxparkrec.org. Tuesday, March 11th, 6.30 to 8.30 at the Oxford Public Library, learn how to make your own home cleaning products, salves, toothpaste, deodorants, and flavored infused vinegars and oils. For more information, call 248-628-3034. Addison Township and Lake Orion Township are still both seeking volunteers for Meals on Wheels drivers. If you're a senior and you have one hour per week to share or one hour every other week, you can make sure that no senior goes hungry. For more information, call 248-628-3388 or telephone 248-693-0440. A great organization. March 17th, get on the Oxford bus and celebrate St. Patrick's Day at a Soaring Eagle Resort and Casino in Mount Pleasant. Oxford Parks and Recreation is offering a trip where guests will be treated to a show by the four Irish tenors singing your favorite Irish songs. The trip also includes $10 casino play and $5 meal vouchers. Call 248-628-1720 for more information or go to oxparkrec.org. On Tuesday, March 18th from, uh, and April 15th and May 2nd at the Oxford Public Library, the ever popular traditional Bingo returns. Bring your friends and win an assortment of popular books. For more information, call 248-628-3034. If you have a local business or if you are an interested person or an organization wishing to show your support for local Oxford school sports, music concerts, or any of the many programs that broadcast from our TV station, you could become a sponsor or an underwriter on OCTV. A promotional television spot would be created along with recognition given to you by our sports announcers during the event. It's easy and it's inexpensive. For more information, contact our TV st uh, service or station manager. His name is uh, Bill Service and at 248-628-9658. Or you can send a message of interest to, it, to his email address, which is manager at occtv.org. Now, we at Oxford Community TV would like our television viewing public to learn more about your club or organization's special upcoming event or charity. So if you would like to get your special event mentioned on our television show, call us at 248-628-9658 or you can go to our website at occtv.org. A final reminder, you can find our OCTV program scheduled by going to our website at occtv.org and just by clicking on um, uh, programs and it'll bring you to uh, the list of programs that we provide. When you find the program schedule, you will see a large list of interesting programs. One program I recommend is my good friend Bill Service who always has interesting local stories and interviews on his Our Community Access program. Check it out. This is Oxford Community Television OCTV. 
I'm your host, Elgin Nichols. We invite you to join us again for the next segment of your weekly calendar of events.